Yeah, yeah. I had a plan to uh, yell like the water boy because I was mic'd up today. I hope y'all hear it. That you've got to see Miles Sanders yelling like yeah. Miles Sanders yelling like Adam Sandler <laughs> as Bobby Boucher as the water boy. And the Sandman responded with this tweet Love you, buddy. I mean, that's just great stuff. <laughs> Speaking of great stuff, welcome into Birds Huddle powered by Points Bet along with Mr. Great Stuff himself, Barrett Brooks. I am Taryn Hatcher. I mean, Barrett, you gotta love seeing. Yeah. It's just, it's such a fun, easy time to have fun like that. Oh, no question, no question. Hey, man, it's sometimes you need some high-quality H2O. Well, hey, my boy was out there rocking people, blocking. I'm not just on the run plays, but also on the passer plays. Miles Sanders had a great game up in the Meadowlands. He made it happen. I mean, when you look at it, he was taking guys and putting them on their back. I feel for that linebacker when they ran the QB sweep or, you know, that, that, the stretch play. He butted him up, hit him right in the mouth, put him on his back. That's what I'm talking about, Miles Sanders. That's what I'm talking about. Way to make it happen, young boy. I love the Bobby Chibouche. You love your mama, and you go out there, and you hit linebackers. So that's what you need to do, bro. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, meanwhile, the Eagles defense playing at an elite level, and Brandon Graham's coming off a career day. Here's Jonathan Gannon today on BG. It's the Bird's Eye View presented by Ocean Casino and Resort in Atlantic City. With what he's done coming off the injury and the role that he's taken on, I mean, he feels good and he goes out there and he produces like all of our guys. But that's why I like the rotation of that room because it keeps those guys fresh. So, you know, later in the game, they're, you know, they're, they're not tired and they can go win at a high level. So um, BG's done an excellent job, as all those guys are, and, and he's producing at a high level, which... Honestly, I'm very, I'm really not surprised by that. You know, I expect him to go in and win, and he does. All right, there's some interesting things to break down there, and that brings us to Barrett's three-point stance presented by your Mercedes. Stance number one, Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham are playing at a really high level. We heard Jonathan Gannon say that's what he expects out of him, but to be fair, Barrett, 34, coming off an Achilles. We thought Fletcher Cox might be petering off at this, or he could at this point in his career. And both of them are hitting the gas. I'll tell you what. You're talking about high-quality H2O, that Bobby Boucher water? <laughs> I need the, whatever they're drinking. Fletcher Cox and BG are playing at a high level, enormous level. I mean, you heard the head coach. The head coach said the other day that, you know, Brandon Ground's built to rush the passer. Well, that's going to show you that you're 34 years old, you rush the passer like him, three sacks in one game, you're doing something right. But, you know, Coach is right. Coach Gannon is right, the defensive coordinator. What's going on is the rotation that these guys have is working. I mean, you have so many guys can come in and spell you that you can give your all every single play. Now, they go from having, what, I think Fletcher Cox played his 70 plays against Washington. I mean, that's too much to ask a guy, especially a guy of his age, to go out there and do. You can't have optimal um, uh, play selections when you don't go out there and you're playing too much. And now they have a rotation. They probably average about 30, 35 plays a game, which means that when you get in there, you can give them your all, knowing that somebody's going to come in and relieve you. Man, you could play for years doing that, you know, and I think this is helping this team out a lot. When you have quality backups like we do, Linville Joseph and Dominican Sue can go in there and they'll be the first wave to go against that defensive line. Then you turn right back around, you can put, you know, Fletcher Cox and Hargraves in there, take them out. Then you turn around and put Milton Williams in there. Then you put uh, Davis in there and that, you know, that wave of guys come out. At the defense, defensive end position, you got Hassan Reddick on one side, Sweat on the other side. You put G BG in on um, both sides. You can put Williams in on the outside. It gives them guys more of an opportunity, go to the sideline Line, get some rest, and then come on out there like some crazed dogs again. That rotation is the same rotation that we had when we won the Super Bowl that year. Imagine that, you know, those guys, you know, had, you know, Timmy Jernick and Fletcher Cox, all those guys were going in and out. It's like a NASCAR. And the more and more guys you get in there, the less tired they are and gives you more of an opportunity to play at a high level every single play. You can go out, all out every single play. And that's what's helping this defensive line. I love when we're talking about that D-line. I mean, Hassan Reddick leads the team in stacks, and Josh Swesh is going to get there as their edge rushers. And they were like the seventh well, and eighth names we brought up in the conversation. That's, that's what I'm saying. Look, we might have three, three to four 
double-digit sack guys. Well, when is the last time? I don't know if it's ever happened here in Philadelphia since the days with Reggie White and then when you have over three or four ten-sack guys. We could possibly have that right here. Over the last seven games, we have, what, 30-some sacks? Let's go, baby. Let's rush the pass. That's how you win championships. All right, let's move right along to number two now. Howie Roseman, credit to the guy, best general manager in the NFL right now. That's what he's looking like, Barrett, the team he's put together. No question, you know, and we were talking upstairs, you know, about how he's, over to, he's able to go out there and be an architect in his second tenure here. His first tenure, he did all right. You know, I was talking to guys who were like, well, you know, his first year, he did all right. They made the playoff two years. Well, now look at him. I mean, he's brought in anything you want, and he has a Christmas list. He goes and asks his coaches, hey, what can I do? to be put in a position that I can get this guy and that guy. And Howard Rosen goes out and get it. I mean, he's a perfect Santa Claus type of dude right now. They need a way to stop the run. He goes out and gets Sue. He goes out and get Joseph. They need a pass rusher. He got Hassan Reddick. They need a linebacker, Kazir White, on the offensive side of the ball. You know what? I believe if we get a number one receiver, we'll be one of the top teams in the NFL. It'll make our offense run better. Let me go out there and get what you want, coach. And what happened? Steichen gets his Christmas gift. He gets A.J. Brown. Now he has a number one receiver and a number one A receiver in Smitty. He has done a phenomenal job of bringing in guys who can come in and play at a high level. I love the fact that this guy is, you know what I mean? Just look at him. He didn't have any uh, DBs to line up opposite a big play slay. He goes out and gets James Bradbury. Now you can play any defense you want to in the secondary because you have two corners that are probably pro bowlers this year. Mm -hmm. Then he has a slot corner and Avante Maddox. He's put things together. We didn't have a safety. In fact, he cut Harris, brings in C.J. Garner-Johnson, and C.J. Garner-Johnson was leading the NFL in interception. I don't know if he still is. He still might be. But then you turn right around, you have, you know, go to the well again and bring Harris back. This team is built to go into the playoffs and win a Super Bowl. They have that quality of player. And oh, by the way, they went and got a quarterback in the second round who is now probably the leading MVP candidate. Big ups to how he made it happen. So, by the way, CJGJ is, in fact, still tied. He's tied for the tied? league with okay. six. And I also credit to, credit to Howie Roseman here in terms of we are talking about turning things around. We all laughed when he called Philly a QB factory. Yeah, we he did. brought in Jalen Hurts. Yeah, we did. Now look at this team. All right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he knew that was going to happen the way it did, but we're enjoying it now regardless. I work with it. All right, number three. Howie is going to have some tough decisions to make, though. We've got a list of ten double digits impending free agents, and you've ranked them in terms of who you went back, went want back, excuse me, who is at the top of B. Brooks, Christmas list. This is, this is my list right here. Now, my guy that I really want back is T.J. Edwards. You know, once you get a guy right now that can be in the middle of your defense and play at a high level, you got to keep him around. He did this the hard way. He went out there, was not drafted. They said it was too slow. Look at him now. Leading the team in um, tackles. He, I mean, he hits guys like he's lost out of rocket. Uh, Javon Hargrave, we need him to solidify the middle of the field. We don't know if we'll get Fletcher Cash back. We don't know if we're going to get Sue who's going to sign back or if Joseph's going to sign back. CJ uh, Garner Johnson, he's going to be a big time name out in the free agent market. And I know he's not going to get Philly, uh, uh, you know, a hometown discount. He's probably going to get upwards of 13 to $15 million being a safety in the league. Uh, Miles Sanders, I mean, I would love to have him back. He's going to go out and test the market, but maybe he wants to be around here. Maybe he wants to stay around here. That's up to him. He had to give Philly a hometown discount for it, pay him about five to six million dollars a year. Um, Bradbury is a guy that I think is going to be way more than, you know, we can afford also. Bradbury at this point has shown that he's still got it. The Giants let him go, and like he was nothing, he comes here, rejuvenates his career. He's one of the top corners in the league. It's going to be hard trying to sign him back. And, I mean, you just you go through Kelsey if Kelsey wants to sign back. Uh, Kazir White, he's an impending free agent. He rejuvenated himself. In fact, I don't, I don't see how he left the Chargers, how they let him leave the Chargers. But he has had a great season. Uh, Sayamalu, one of the better guards in the league. He's under the two lids at, you know, this, this, you know, at, at, at the university. Um, Statland? I, I mean, St you know, Statland, Statland University. You? I don't know if he's going to, you know, be able to come back because he's an offensive lineman under Coach Stylage, uh Tulich. So, I mean, there's so many guys at this team that can go and, and get money somewhere else. Hopefully we can get them here at a hometown. I'm very time. interested to see what Bradbury can get this time around because when the Giants let him go, it was at a very inopportune time for his exactly. bank account. Should be interesting to see how things go this time around. All right, much more ahead here on Bird's Huddle, and here's the playbook presented by your Philadelphia area Cadillac dealers. 
Ruben Frank is here and he is excited to Ruben's bring down world. the birds. Uh, is Jalen Hurts having the best season for an Eagles quarterback ever? Our pick and click question is on tap. And which AFC team would concern you most should the Eagles reach the Super Bowl? Stick around for that and more.